Starbase crews aren't messing around as they work day and night on SM-20, Booster 2, and building up the orbital launch site. Dragon flies to its heavenly nest. Falcon places another payload into orbit. Of course, I still love you and barks for the west side, gangsta. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. SpaceX may not be launching any Starships as of late, but that doesn't mean nothing's going on in Starbase, Texas. This week, a large water tower, presumably for the orbital launch site's Deluge system, and fourth and fifth segments of the orbital launch and integration tower were transported down Highway 4 and parked at the launch site. Video of the events were captured by our good friends over at Lab Padre and also Ryan from Starship Gazer's YouTube channel, a veteran of the Marine Corps who relocated to Brownsville to document history in the making. As always, be sure to subscribe to these guys, and that goes for every contributor I feature in these episodes. Link in the description. Yesterday, Franken Crane was raised up in preparation for stacking these new segments on the tower, but it has not done so yet. More sections wait their turn for future transport and integration as well. Next week looks like it's going to be busy for Starbase crews, and what is believed to be part of the orbital launch tower's integration crane was seen arriving at the site as well. Stacking of Super Heavy Booster 2, or BN3, progresses. It's over halfway there, and the downcomer that will feed methane through the lower LOX tank into the Raptor engines has been inserted. Those Raptors are already making good use of SpaceX's newest test stand in McGregor, Texas. Local Reagan keeping tabs on the recent static test happening there. A 15-second fire-up christened the new vertical test stand last weekend. She and all of us can expect more boom time from the facilities. After all, these days SpaceX is manufacturing one Raptor every other day in Hawthorne, California. Each will need to be tested, and each Starship Super Heavy launch will require about three dozen of them. Back to Starbase, Starship Gazer captured images of SN20's thrust dome with Raptor vac mounts mounted in place. Three of them, and three more mounts for sea level Raptors. That equals six. If you wanna be an engineer or rocket scientist, you gotta learn math, kids. These mounts further indicate that Starship 20 remains the most likely candidate to fly to orbit upon a booster. And speaking of booster, Remember last week test vessel BN 2.1 was carted off to the launch site for testing? Well, it was cryo-tested on Tuesday this week, and it appears everything went nominally. And being the eagle-eyed stud that he is, Gazer also spotted deliveries of mini bakery materials arriving at Starbase. Elon obviously following in the footsteps of renowned space explorer Buzz Lightyear. I am Mrs. Nesbitt! Okay, so actually the mini bakery is just science slang for a heat shield manufacturing facility. SpaceX is making it an on-site thing now and has an $8.5 million contract with the U.S. Air Force to refine the process. Starship will need a heat shield on its windward side, that science slang for belly, to stand a chance at surviving re-entry into the atmosphere. Remember, all this we just went over is preparation for the first full-up Starship Super Heavy flight, where the world's biggest rocket booster will place the world's biggest upper stage on an orbital trajectory to do a controlled splashdown off the coast of Kauai, as early as a couple months from now. But just because we have found ourselves in the middle of a Starship launch law doesn't mean we don't have other SpaceX missions to enjoy. Last week, SpaceX launched their 22nd resupply mission to the space station with a Cargo Dragon 2 capsule. It rendezvoused with the ISS early Saturday morning and docked successfully and autonomously shortly after. In the following day, another Falcon 9 launched another Sirius XM satellite to orbit on the very same booster that flew for the Crew-1 and Crew-2 missions. It made a third landing on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship, and the payload was deployed without incident. SpaceX is in talks with several commercial airliners to provide their planes with in-flight Starlink Wi-Fi. Thank God, I hope Southwest is one of them. But first, in order to do that, they'll need to begin placing their next generation Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. These upgraded sats will utilize onboard laser linkage to transmit data amongst themselves because over vast expanses of ocean, there are no ground stations to relay any communication. And the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship has completed its preparations for transport to the West Coast to support the recovery of a series of Starlink boosters launching out of Vandenberg as early as next month. It's heading to the Bahamas first, where it is expected to meet up and piggyback on the mighty Servant 1 through the Panama Canal. And finally, we've got a few more launches this month for our viewing pleasure. June 17th, we'll have a Falcon 9 deliver another GPS-3 payload to orbit for the U.S. Space Force. A Thursday afternoon launch, nice. And the SpaceX rideshare mission of Transporter 2 is expected to go up on June 24th to a sun-synchronous orbit. And now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. Another U.S. rocket company sees what the future holds for fully reusable rockets and doesn't plan on getting left behind. Relativity Space announced this week that they raised another $650 million to increase their efforts to build their next rocket design, the Terran-R 
a 100% reusable two-stage rocket aiming to compete with SpaceX in the medium lift market. And if it looks similar to Starship to you, that's because it is. Their CEO admires the Starship program, like the rest of us, and described the Terran R as a, quote, more of a miniature Starship than a Falcon 9 rocket. Their long-term goal is to get hundreds of thousands of reuses out of each rocket, the second stage being the hardest part about that, since it will be subjected to greater heat during re-entry. But since Relativity uses custom-built 3D printers and exotic printed metals to build their rockets, its lighter weight should allow it to endure the higher temps. Relativity Space is on track to launch their first rocket, the Terran 1, on its maiden flight later this year and already has a backlog of customer orders. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to those of you on Patreon and those of you who signed up to support the channel on YouTube. Don't forget, you can also watch my content on Rumble, where Space Eccentric has been a featured channel for over a year now. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. Today's message focuses on exposing the political and ideological threats facing our nation and its space program. But once again, the video is a little bit too long to include in this one, so I made it its own thing. You can click on it right here. If you're watching on Rumble, I made it its own separate video you can find on my channel.